What's up everybody? Thanks for coming back. The Bearded Prepper here. Today is an exciting day. At least it's exciting for me because I've got a project that I've been wanting to take on for quite some time. Um, if you've heard of the Berkey water filters, they're top of the line, cream of the crop. Um, I've always kind of looked at them and thought, man, that'd be great to have, especially in case of an emergency. Uh, the people that I know that have them use them pretty much every day. Uh, for filtering tap water or whatever on the countertop traveling um, you know they'll even st filter stream water the filters for the Berkey's they're quite expensive as a matter of fact cream of the crop Berkey is very expensive you're talking hundreds of dollars uh, just to get replacement filter packs is you know 150 200 dollars so us poor folk can't really always afford that but I, I have a good alternative. I've been researching this for some time and I've seen other people do it on YouTube. And now I'm about to make my own emergency homemade water filtration system, similar to the Berkey's, but probably, you know, not quite as lavish or maybe not even as long lasting, but the, the premise is this, I've got a red bucket, blue bucket so that I can keep them apart. Red is always gonna be dirty water so that I don't drink it. Blue's always going to be clean water. Nothing goes in the red bucket except for dirty water. Nothing goes into this bucket except what is filtered in. And these are just your standard buckets with removable lids. And uh, what I have here is I've got a charcoal water filter that is marketed to be a replacement to fit the Berkey's. Um, this is the most difficult piece of the whole project because I had to read a lot of reviews and look at a lot of customer um, feedback on these to make sure I got one that actually works because a lot of these are made in China. They're dirt cheap. Um, and they market them as replacement for Berkey filters, but uh, the feedback may say, hey, look, you know, I did the dye test where I put dye in the water um, and it came through just as dirty or didn't even get the chlorine out or maybe it filtered for about you know, one or two treatments and then just stop filtering it clogged up, things of that nature. These are still generic um, water filters. There's a two pack here. I also got a two pack of the water spigot with a little, you know, uh, spring closure where you can use it like a water spigot out of any kind of dispenser, a dispenser spout. That's what actually what it's called. I got a two pack of those also. So inside the box here, I have another spout, another filter whole nother setup and uh you know this little rubber filtering for uh filtering the water anyway here's how it goes i'm going to drill a hole the size of this little spout right there we'll put that back on to keep it clean it has a little nut on here like a little wing nut to tighten it down i'm going to drill a hole right in the middle of this bottom so that this will sit inside the bucket with the little spout sticking out. I'll put the wing nut on the outside, tighten it down so it doesn't leak. And it'll contain all the contaminated water here. That way I can fill this up with up to five gallons of water from a spring, from a stream, you name it, uh, rainwater, whatever I want to use. And I'm going to drill a hole. I'll remove this little label, but I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of this lid right in the middle, same place. And it's gonna be also be the size of the little output port here, which is gonna to happen to be this one. Uh, then of course down here, somewhere along the bottom, close enough that I can still sit it without damaging the, the um, you know, output spigot. I'm gonna drill a hole there, big enough to put that in it comes with its own set of uh, nuts and washers to keep it from leaking. And then, of course, I'll fill this bucket up. I'll put it on top, line the holes up, sit it on, and let gravity do the work. And we'll filter it through down into here. It'll be gravity feed. This will be inside this bucket, filtering the water. It'll be coming out the port and dripping into this one. So, you know, I may not use this in everyday life right now but I have a backup filter 
um, or an additional filter and spigot so I can make two if need be so that I have more water filtering. Um, but you know, I could take this in an emergency situation or a situation where I don't have access to clean water. Um, and um, you know, it'll be portable. I can take it wherever I go if I'm out traveling. Granted, I wouldn't probably want to carry it in my hands if I'm walking on foot, but if I have a vehicle, I can take it wherever I go um, and filter up to five gallons at a time. So why don't I get to work on these? We'll put them together and I'll bring you guys through the process with me. We'll see if it actually works. Cause that's important. You know, you get little details like this and you would think, uh, oh, I'll just not take my time with it. I'll drill it out. Then you pop off center and then you, you're going to have to drill an off center hole there to match up or to sit off center. Sometimes it pays attention or makes, um, makes things better if you just pay attention to the details, slow down a little bit. You know, you think about it, especially in a survival situation, you would, um, you'd want to take your time because, you know, you may not be thinking as clearly, you may have more stress at first, and you want to take your time. Use your common sense. Make sure you get things done the right the first time because, you know, you may not have backup supplies, you may only have one shot at it, so. Perfect fit, nice and snug. All right, let's do the same thing over here now. This time I only need the bucket lid. I've already got a little divot here, so I think I'll just start there. Just like that. On this one, I will probably wallow it out just a little bit more so I can ease it down in there without a whole lot of tight fit. I don't want to put too much pressure on that. What with that being a um, plastic, you know, spout stick out. You don't want too much pressure on that because it could snap off and that would really ruin the whole thing. You want something that's going to feed in very easily. So I made that one just a little bit larger so it'll go in and out smoothly, easily, without a whole lot of effort. All right. Well, let's cut away and go ahead and since we're at it, let's just get the spigot done too. All right, you notice I'm keeping everything in the packaging because I want to keep it as clean as possible for as long as possible. I think we'll go right for that little little O right there. We've got a Lowe's bucket and a tractor supply bucket. A little diversity going on. Yeah, if we have any marketing folks from Lowe's or tractor supply out there, feel free to reach out to me. I have an email set up for this account. The Bearded Prepper, the number one, at yahoo.com. And uh, I'd love to talk to you. You can sponsor me. I'll be glad to use your tools, use your supplies, put them on my channel, and, uh, you know, help increase your sales. This seems a bit awkward. If I can't do this here on the workbench in view of you, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably just cut away and drill it out somewhere more stable. That way we don't waste your time and I don't embarrass myself. Be right back. You know, I got started and I realized this is silly. I just took this giant bit out of that big manual drill because I realized this plastic is soft enough. I can really just do it by hand. But take your time with it. I mean, 
you know, having fragile material you're working with, you definitely don't want to split this. That would, that would ruin it. You'd have to start over with a new bucket. So take your time with it. There you go. See, I was able to get through it pretty easily, even just by hand here. smooth it out a little bit. I may have to trim a little bit of that lip off with my knife just to make sure we get it good and smooth and there's no burrs. You don't want the burrs in there with your um, with your spigot because that'll just be an opportunity for it to leak. So yeah, maybe just trim that off. You maybe even some fine grit sandpaper might help, you know, to get the burrs off once you get finished. Make it as smooth on the, especially on the outside as possible where you're, and well, on the inside, whichever side you put your washer on, you probably won't put your washer on the inside. And of course, I'm going to take these buckets back and uh, take them out where I have running water and some soap. I'm going to wash them off again too. Make sure I get all these shavings out of it. And, um, I'm also going to prime this filter. Uh, it comes with a little rubber washer here in it that you can put on and then you push this up against a, a sink with the little screen removed and it'll force water through and reverse flush it to make sure you get any, you know, charcoal or powder or debris, anything from manufacturing out of it so that it's not there any longer. So, all right, let me do that. I'll rinse these out, prime this. And I'll come back and uh, we'll see if it works. Stick with me, guys. All right, here we are. Here's what you missed. I went ahead and put the spigot on there. I tested it to make sure it wasn't leaking. And it came with a washer for the inside and the outside. So it's good and snug. And if you notice, it uh, sits above the ground level. So even if you don't have a stand and you sit it down, you won't break it off. Um, one thing that you do want to be careful of is this bucket. You can see I put the filter inside. I snugly secured it to the bottom with a wing nut. It has a rubber washer on the inside to prevent it from leaking. And um, that spout sticking down lower than your bucket. You don't want to sit it necessarily like this and mess it up. Um, so storage may be one of those things where you have to get it completely dry. And um, actually, you know, I think what I'll do is probably have somewhere to set it up off of the bottom or either on its side and keep it clean and keep the lid on. Same with this thing. You want to keep your spout clean. I mean, you can wash it, but if it's in a clean place, but you can see the spout goes in the little hole there just perfectly. And then everything sits together. So we're going to give it a try. Here's what I've done. So short of going and fetching some muddy water, I did get a bucket of about three gallons of water. And I went ahead and put some red food coloring in it. You can see there in front of the freezer very easily. If this thing works, the red dye test should work. It should filter out the red dye, leave it in the filter. Give me clean water here. So, I'm going to fill it up and uh, give it a try. I'll come back and I'll, I'll give you a, a little sneak peek at what it looks like as it's filtering and such as that. So stick with me. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it is, it is draining a little bit quicker than I would expect. Uh, just the proof is in the pudding here. You can see. This is the red water I showed you before. So there's the filter. It's not a tremendous flow. You can, that's been going for about a minute and it still sounds like it's hitting the hard bottom of the bucket. So maybe it's not as fast as it looks like. 
but I'm going to cover this up and these are just old food storage buckets that I had. You can see I had salt in that at one time and something else at another time. I cleaned them out good and um, I'm going to let this drain a little bit and then I'll come back and we'll look at the results. Stick with me. Well, here we are. It's been 25 minutes, about three gallons. And um, I'm going to say there's only I'm going to say a half to three quarters of a gallon gone. So that's good. I was incorrect in my initial assessment. And when I thought it was draining faster than it was, um, it's going very slow. I can still hear it trickling in there about the same speed, which is what you want. That means you have a very tight filter, but not one that is, um, you know, so tight you're just not going to get water. I haven't checked it at all, folks. I wanted you to be here to either experience the glory or savor the disappointment with me. So let's see what happens. Well, it just made it up to the spigot level. That's why um, I'm saying it's probably about a half gallon because spigot level's here. And as you can see, as you can see, we've got clear water. That makes me happy. <laughs> that means I didn't get taken for a sucker on an affordable filter. All the... Uh, all the reviews were correct and I'm holding it up to the light as well I can't see even a red tinge at all let's see what it tastes like I'll be honest with you that tastes like distilled water you know how distilled water just has no flavor whatsoever no minerals, no anything. That's what it tastes like. And this is um, this is also chlorinated public utility water uh, as well. So filtered out the chlorine, filtered out the red dye. If it's getting red dye out, I have no doubt it's going to filter out viruses, bacteria, and all of it. So I encourage you guys to check this out. All in all, I have less than $40 in this, maybe slightly over 40 when you consider the value of the buckets because they have gone up these days. I've had these for some time. I used to keep my preps in them um, before I, I moved here to my current location. And I still keep a good supply of them in case I need to uh, weatherproof them or weatherproof the preps and cash them out somewhere. So. Use what you have. Look, I would love to have a Berkey filter system because I think they're great. I think it, it, it's probably nearly impossible to replicate them um, for the price that they sell them for. But if you can't afford a Berkey and you need a good backup system or something that you can have in case of an emergency or just the, the knowledge of how to do it. Because see, even if this one goes bad, I've got another backup set ready to go. Because I've got another filter, I've got another little spigot in case that one breaks. As a matter of fact, it was so affordable. When I can, I think I'm going to add a few more to my preps. That way I've got a portable water filtration gravity feed system um, that I can take with me when I'm moving around in a vehicle. Or I can use here at my homestead to give us fresh, clean, healthy water. Even uh, through, you know, a rain catchment system or whatever. And... Uh, I encourage you guys to get out and practice, practice your skills, learn to do something new. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you have knowledge, use your common sense. As always, I encourage you to be prepared, seek the wisdom of our Lord and Savior. God bless. I'm the Bearded Prepper, signing off.